Hey, folks, before we start this episode, this is the fabled lost episode <laughs> fabled, of That huh? Gets My Gun. <laughs> what? You won't let me say that? Okay, this is the... <laughs> I think you mean fairy tale. <laughs> Fables, fairy... They're, they're kind of similar. Right? Oh, was that a pun? It was a palindrome. Okay. Is that the, the word that sounds like it sounds? Is spelled the way that it sounds like... No, I think that is onomatopoeia. Gesundheit. Bam! The episode... Public school in action there, folks! Well, no more bad-mouthing it. We didn't do no book learning where I glowed up. Good. The episode that you're about to hear, or about to turn off... <laughs> you should turn off. ...was recorded a long time ago. It was intended to be a regular that gets my goat episode, but something happened. Was it? Well... Was it just fear for the Cinezas episode? Yeah, it was recorded like the week after we recorded Cinezas and the Ash King episode in which we went into the Abraham deal and we worried, oh boy, we weren't supposed to do anything about religion, religion or politics. and politics. And we actually went into both of them because we started talking about war in Iraq and all sorts of crazy stuff that we always tend to steer clear of because it's not worth it. It's divisive. Then the very next week, you went into this topic. Big is not to be held to blame for this one. <laughs> I, and you know what? He probably shouldn't be held to blame for any of the hijinks that go on on the show. Well, is that unfair? Well, I'm sure there are some hijinks that are my fault. Sometimes he runs the, the episode and sometimes I run the episode. It depends on what is eating us, what is getting our goat. And in this one, I had something that I wanted to run with. And I, I, I got all excited about it. And maybe I said things that I shouldn't have said. But regardless or irregardless, as some politicians have taught us, we decided not to air the episode. I was afraid that people would become incensed, that people would become enraged, that people would feel the need to call us sexist or misogynistic or f cards or one of these words. That was your daughter's word. What was the what what was it that we were afraid they would call us? Doofenshmirtz. That. Exact that's it. And I never want to be called You know what? I don't even want another person to ever be called that. So we shelved the episode and then time passed and, you know, the is this episode, people understood that maybe we're a comedy show and in saying things that we hope are funny, we offend. People were cool about it. Time passed. I felt like, okay, you know what? We recorded this episode. It's edited. Let's put it out there. But we'll put in a warning at the beginning in case it is upsetting to people, in case it is ugly to people. Because I say some things. We bring up a couple of subjects. We, the, 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 the topic of rape is bandied about like it's a funny thing and then it's also used as a barrier between men and women you know the possibility of rape is there in the back of women's minds and you know what somebody might say hey that's not that's not fair that's not cool to say that and you know what that is fair that you feel that way if they, if you do yeah and so if you don't feel like you want to listen to this episode we won't make it we, we recommend you turn it off now if it's going to upset you so if you don't want to hear that Go your merry way, and we'll see you again next week when we're talking normal stuff like movies. Yeah. Okay, so here's that lost episode of That Gets My Goat. And again, if you're, you're leaning one way or another, I'd just give it a miss. It's fine. Yeah, we won't be upset. Please, sir, that gets my goat. Hi, this is Rich Outfield. And Big Anklevich. And this is That Gets My Goat. Yes. Your favorite of all the shows we do. No, no one's favorite, apparently. Oh, darn. But I don't care. I like it's your it. your favorite. It may be. There you go. This is just our secondary podcast where we get on and complain about something. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you go right ahead. It's I think a, I can tell you're just aching to unleash. Oh, I can't wait to get a goat. Oh, that probably didn't sound right, did it? No, anyways, the other day... And it kind of goes along, I complained earlier in uh, the Get My Goat series about how you 
get on the contest for the whatever the mountain dew you get the bottle and you open it up and on, on the lid it has a code that you can check online and you go online and they ask for like your name address phone number uh, email address etc create a password create an account log in check your email to get that uh, login yeah and, uh, i hated that crap and i complained about that before and this kind of goes right along those lines um in a totally different way. I don't understand why someone would do this, but not too long ago, I was with my wife. I was at the mall, which I don't go to very often, so I don't run into this problem very often, which is a good thing because I would probably become a total douchebag to the people that are behind the register if I did run into this a lot. But I go to the store, and my wife's like, oh, these kids' clothes, they're so cute. We must buy them for our children. And so she picked out a whole bunch of crap. And then we go up there, and we're buying this stuff. And she's like, oh, are you all ready to go? And we're like, yeah. It's funny that the clerk didn't have an annoying voice, but your wife did. <laughs> yeah, good thing she doesn't listen to the show, huh? Couldn't be caught dead. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we go up there and she's like, you ready to go? And we're like, yeah, we just want this gigantic pile of things here. She's like, okay, can I get your phone number? And I'm like, what the... I'm just buying these things. What the hell do you want my phone number for? I don't understand. And I noticed... A lot of the stores at the mall, which, again, I don't go too often, so I don't run into it. But everybody was like, well, what's your phone number when I go to check out? Why do they want my phone number? Why is it that to buy something at their store, they need a bunch of information about me? What are they going to do with that phone number? Do you have any idea? No. I, I mean, in the times that I have asked people for their phone number in retail environments, it's uh -huh. been to look up people's accounts. If they don't have their account number or a card or whatever it might be, you can always look somebody up under their phone number. So you're talking like a, a video store, for that example. Kind of they thing. have an account because they've got to bring the crap back. They're not just buying it and taking it home and keeping it. But yeah, sometimes people will say that it's for a survey or for collecting data. You know, they'll ask for your zip code. Right, zip code I've had like too. That. And Which again, what the heck do they want my zip code for? To determine how many people from each <laughs> location. Uh, to decide how well it, their marketing is working in that little air zip code. Yeah, uh, zip code, I don't mind very much because... Less specific. Yeah, it belongs to 10,000 or more probably people. Why do they want my phone number? Are they going to call me up later and be like, uh, Hi, uh, you remember you bought some stuff from us the other day? Well, I just wanted to call you up and tell you about some new things we have. You know, that's possible, oh, I guess. Oh, gosh, I, if they did. I, a lot of times when <laughs> people will ask for email addresses or whatever, you do worry that you're going to yeah, be Yeah, you know you're going to get spammed. At Walmart today, I was in line, and there was a girl in the line ahead of me, attractive. Oh, good. And she paid with a check, and I guess the, the woman needed a telephone number on that. And uh, anyhow, so she, she gave her telephone number, and, and I was like, oh, hey, I know a hot chick's telephone number. <laughs> <laughs> I followed her home and, and brutally, brutally murdered her. Oh, uh, that's just your way. But, you know, even if she hadn't given her telephone number, I still would have followed her home. Yeah, that, that, that ruins really... the whole story, doesn't but it? But when you got to her house, you could call her up and say, have you checked the children? Yes, with funny <laughs> type. Uh, but did you want to complain more about that? No, thing, I, was, I, just I kind of... really didn't have a, It wasn't all that big of a deal. The other day, I got out of work, and there was this girl, a co-worker, and she was walking to uh -huh. the bus stop. And it was night. It was the middle of the night, and she was alone. And I got in my car, and I asked her if she needed a ride. And, and before she said yes, she hesitated. And I would have, too. Well, and I'm trying <laughs> not to be offensive in any way on this, because I understand what that hesitation meant. That hesitation was her asking herself, well... Do I know this guy? Do I get a creepy vibe from this guy? What what will happen if I get in the car of right. this person? Do I want to walk home? Do I want to go wait for the bus? Where do I know this guy from? What kind? You know, a bunch of questions that must be asked. Maybe she has to weigh all the uh, evidence to try and decide. Right. It might not even be you know, is this guy a serial killer? Kind of questions. It might be you know, is this guy going to hit on me if if I let him take me home. Is he going to want something in return? Things like right. that. She said yes, and, and I drove her out into the middle of the desert, and no one has found her. But I <laughs> – that part was also a joke. Oh, good. 
I drove her home, and and you know, it was nothing. It's just, I just drove her home. It was on the way. Uh huh. But it did make me think a little bit about young women and how different life might be for for one of them than it is for me. And you know, just walking through a, a parking garage at night or getting in an elevator with, where it's just you and one other person, things like that, where they may have fears that wouldn't even occur to me. Right. And uh, that's it. It's not even to get my goat. I didn't. You, your goat wasn't even gotten by this. You just no. I see. It's it's me chickening out because I've said all this stuff about you know I understand, uh-huh. and and I'm I'm putting myself in her shoes and that and for me to immediately start ranting or getting angry about it makes me an asshole and I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm not an asshole, but I'm gonna go Wait, ahead. What? I'm gonna go ahead and, and take it anyway. Uh, my mom and my sisters. They watch the Lifetime movie channel uh-huh. all the time. Right. And this is a channel built around not entertaining women, but attacking and destroying men. And it's just hour after hour of programming of, she trusted the wrong man. <laughs> and it's like, she gave her heart to the wrong man. He offered her a ride home. She weighed the consequences and went with the wrong man. Dead wrong. And what's funny is it often has a male announcer guy, you know, <laughs> right. which it just doesn't make sense. But it's just film after film about rapists, about women that marry a guy who has a double life. He's cheating on her. He cuts her up in little pieces and moves on to the next family. You know, he gets drunk and he beats the kids or he molests the kids. Or right. He, All those the, questions that that girl had to run through in her head as she wondered, God, do I... Take a ride from this guy, or is it better off to just walk the rest of the way? A lot of the fears that she was running through in her head are fostered at least, but perhaps even created, or at least, you know, the channel. God bless you, Big Anklevich, because that's what I was too afraid to The say. channel really pushes those kind of things. And, you know, it's really sad that that's the things that you have to go through, because you, you never know when you're going to be you trusted the wrong man kind of thing. So you got to be afraid, sadly. That's the effed up way that our world is now. It's just so screwed up that you can't know. I hear you. And as a representative of the portion of the male populace that has never raped a woman, <laughs> I just, I you know, or, or murdered a woman or driven a woman out into the woods and shaved her head and kept the hair and then left her there. <laughs> Uh, these are things I've not done yet, ma'am. And I, I just – I take so much offense at this all men are shits a mythos that is perpetuated by this network. Uh-huh. It is television for women showing women in – dangerous situations women in ethically questionable situations and all that and how do they rise above and that sort of thing uh, so i can, i guess i can see there's, how it's empowering for women but there's got to be more things that you can do with entertainment for women than just oh you might be massacred by a man or taken advantage of by a man. i mean there's got to be something out there where they can also make a female bad guy in a movie on the lifetime channel Right? I mean, isn't that possible? Shouldn't it, it be possible? It's, it would certainly seem to be. In my interpretation of feminism, it means that a woman can be a hero, a woman can be a savior, a woman can be strong, a woman can be powerful. But at the same time, a woman can be the bad guy, a woman can be an enemy, a woman can be a failure, a woman can be corrupt. A woman, a woman can be anything. A, a woman is a person. Right. Is my interpretation of feminism. I, I had a conversation with Abby one time where she talked about these, these different waves, uh, waves of, of feminism, feminism or- and that, and and you know, to me, it was it was totally new because we're not going to get taught about feminism in All our right. college experience, and I would have been uncomfortable as hell. It would have been like being in a Lifetime Movie Channel programming meeting. <laughs> and it's like coming up next. If it's got a dick, kill it. You know, stuff like that. I, I would have been squirming and unhappy and it wasn't made for me. And, and you know, to, to give them their their props, they come up with all sorts of crazy fun ways that men can be assholes and bastards. And they can knock up girls and abandon them. They can sleep with your best friend. They can drown you in the swimming pool. They can take your little kid and 
corrupt them and turn them against you or take your little kid and you never see the kid again. They can lie and trick you and take your job or be a mean boss. Or I mean, you know, men are pretty capable of all sorts of cool stuff. You know, they don't believe you when you report a crime and stuff because they're men. There, there's a lot of really cool things that men can do on this Lifetime <laughs> movie channel. And, you know, there's also just a regular Lifetime network that would show, you know, like Cagney and Lacey and Murder, She Wrote and Manimal and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I almost got it out. But it's not the same network as as this life, uh, this LMC that is on – Every time I go over to my mom's house or every time that my sisters come over to my house and want to watch cable, geez, it's just astounding. And I don't know. I shouldn't complain about it, but I, I'm going to. To be continued. Can you say continued? Continued. Can you say continued? To be continued. Say to be continued. To be continued. Continued. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is.